the Matildas kick off for a shot at World Cup bronze, their legacy leading the way to more cash for women's sports. Hundreds of Salamanca stall holders wrongly billed, how the error was missed and how much is owed. The support centre hoping to make it easier for those affected by sexual assault to come forward. One of the four air crew killed in last month's helicopter crash has given a moving service by heartbroken loved ones. Concerns the Yes campaign is dropping the ball in its quest for an Indigenous voice to Parliament. And two Premiership heroes say farewell to the Tiger Army. Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Peter Murphy begins now. Good evening. The Matildas history-making World Cup campaign reaches its end tonight. The Tilly shooting for a bronze medal against Sweden. Dedicated fans have turned out at live sites right around the country with strict security in force, particularly in Melbourne, hoping to avoid last week's flare fiasco. One Matildas match left, one live site left. Amy Park enforcing bag checks and proper crowd control, which was impossible to enforce at Fed Square leading to its closure as a place to watch the World Cup. These are the final hours of the tournament for our Matildas. Brisbane sunshine helping them recharge before tonight's third place playoff against Sweden. Win or lose, their legacy is unmatched and it's helped secure funding. The federal government announcing $200 million for community sport targeted to women. We want to make sure that uh, women and girls can see it so that they can then be it. Former Socceroo Craig Foster welcomes the announcement but tweets, it's nowhere near enough, nor targeted to football. Come on Albo, get serious. We really need a dedicated focus to football, to women's football and to our professional game as well. This is important at the grassroots level. The grants program is available to all sports. Head of the A-League's Danny Townsend is disappointed the announcement didn't include investment for A-League women, the major pathway for the Matildas. There's one team not part of the World Cup, the Afghan women's team. FIFA doesn't recognise it, despite recognising the men's team. Football is our medicine. Football is the medicine for our, for our wounds, wounds of war. Supported by Malala Yousafzai, who survived being shot in the head by the Taliban and is the youngest person to win a Nobel Prize when she was 17. It is time for FIFA to decide that they are not standing on the Taliban side. It's almost two years to the day since the team fled Afghanistan. This is the situation uh, in the airport. We just got here and we don't know where to go. So this week is very emotional week for us. It's reminding us what we lost, what our players lost, what they left. The power of sport on show, even in the face of war. Tasmania's football community has welcomed the new grants program to soccer. It's hoping to claim its share of the funding pie as more budding Matilda stars prepare to strap on their boots. We are the most played team sport. We've got lots of pressures across the state and we want to really get access to more funding to make our facilities more fit for purpose. Football Tasmania hopes the cash splash can help prepare them for the expected uptake next season. Hundreds of Salamanca market stall holders are owed thousands of dollars after being wrongly slugged with stamp duty. The major bungle comes down to an administrative error in the State Revenue Office which has flown under the radar for 15 years. Purchasing a site at the iconic Salamanca market doesn't come cheap, with prices maxing out at $200,000. Buyers forced to fork out even more after being incorrectly charged stamp duty since July 1, 2008. A lot could have happened in that 15 years. There may be um, still holders who, who have passed or, or, you know, that aren't in the country anymore. More than 300 businesses are believed to be affected. However, a question mark still hangs over how much they're owed. It really uh, depends on the value of the site at the time that it was purchased. Um, so it can be anything from, you know, $1,000 to, you know, a couple of thousand. The expensive blunder run covered during during negotiations on a new licensing agreement. It then looked at whether each person who moved 
uh, to a different location would have to pay stamp duty. Uh, and what has transpired is that they don't because they never should have been. Small Business Minister Madeline Ogilvie understands the State Revenue Office is looking into the matter and is confident any wrongs will be righted. I just encourage everybody to go and speak with the State Revenue Office to find out if indeed an error in their account has been made. But storeholders say there's an easier road forward, calling on the office to release a list of people impacted and fast track their fix. If um, State Revenue has to field 600 calls for people who think they might be eligible for money, I suspect that that's going to be a fairly big burden on them as well. The Stallholder Association doing its best to contact those entitled to a refund in the meantime. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania's approach to supporting victims of sexual violence has been revolutionised, with a new support centre now open in Launceston. The building putting police and support services under the one roof, helping to reduce the stress victims experience. For victims of sexual violence, the journey to recovery is tough. The trauma at times made even worse when they reach out for help. They've had to retell their story, retell their story to numerous government agencies, to support services, and that has had a very negative effect on their, their healing journey. We have failed victim survivors in the past. A state government initiative aiming to change that experience. Police, support services and government departments united together at the Arch Centre. If they're seeking justice initially uh, or support services uh, and social workers who can walk alongside them. When a victim attends one of these centres, they're getting that wraparound support and they're not telling their story a number of times. Most importantly, victims only have to tell their story once. From the interview rooms through to how police stress, each aspect aimed at making a confronting process less daunting. All our police here are in plain clothes. You probably won't be able to tell the difference between a police officer or one of the counselling staff. With the Commission of Inquiry into Child Sex Abuse reporting back soon, previous efforts are expected to face significant scrutiny. The government confident this is the beginning of a new and better era. A new way of connecting, a new way of providing a place for people to tell their stories. My hope for the Arch Centres is uh, a place of confidence and a place of healing. Hobart Centre opened last month. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. There was traffic chaos in Launceston this afternoon after debris was spilled onto the street after a three-car crash at Kings Meadows. It's believed a Mitsubishi rear-ended two other cars at a busy intersection on Hobart Road, later coming to a stop after crashing into a brick wall. Quick-thinking bystanders rendered assistance and traffic control until emergency services arrived, treating people for multiple and varying injuries. It took around two hours to clear the scene. Friends and family have gathered to farewell Max Nugent, one of four airmen killed when a military chopper crashed during a training exercise off the Queensland coast. The 24-year-old is being remembered for bringing light and laughter into people's lives. We gather in unfathomable grief. We unite in the pain of loss as we say goodbye to our dear son, brother and friend. Fellow army officers held a salute at the end of the moving service as his coffin was carried to a private burial. The Prime Minister has issued a rallying cry for a successful yes vote in the Indigenous Voice referendum. Anthony Albanese turning to a grassroots movement urging Labor's rank and file to campaign like they've never campaigned before. Oh, <laughs> Worried the Yes campaign is dropping the ball. How are you? Anthony Albanese's decided it's time for a reboot. It's an opportunity is to mobilise uh, the Labor Party rank and file. Some rank and file mobilising noisily outside Labor's national conference. The Greens conference bombing, an old warrior insisting their voices be heard. Because the people in power haven't been listening. As the person in power takes his message to the conference floor. Get out there and campaign like you have never campaigned before. A final push to the vote in October or November, a big spending advertising blitz supporting a campaign of door knocking, letterbox dropping, a phone campaign, community meetings led by locals wanting the people 
to take it to the people. Having politicians leading the Yes campaign hasn't worked thus far. This change shifts that leadership from the suits to the grassroots. What are we going to vote? Yes! <laughs> Another old foe rallying hard right conservatives today. Beating this divisive voice is the most important challenge we face as a nation right now. His challenge is winning it. Let's make Australia the greatest country on earth just that little bit greater. And he says, make Australia work better. Mark Riley, 7 News. Victoria has paid $380 million to not stage the Commonwealth Games. It's the bill taxpayers are footing after the Andrews government completed negotiations officially terminating the state's contract to host the 2026 event. The Premier claims it's the best possible result for Victorians after a month of negotiation between his bureaucrats, Games Association officials and mediators. Final settlement, $380 million, not a dollar more, uh, no court action, the matter is closed out and finalised. A secrecy clause silences government critics like local Games Association chief Craig Phillips. $380 million that is now just being torn up and wasted could have gone such a long way in developing the next generation of sporting stars. The government also revealed the figures behind the withdrawal. The best case total games cost in the original March 2022 business case almost $2.5 billion, but the July 2023 estimate almost $7 billion. What happened here is that our most senior public servants, with support from external consultants, put together their best estimates. Those estimates were wrong. The cost of building Games Villages blew out from the original best case, $200 million, to five times that, over a billion. Transport almost tripled, 110 to 306 million. Police and security more than doubled, from 201 to 492 million. And you understand now Victorians being very sceptical about any future estimate? No. Our government has delivered more infrastructure than any government in the history of this state. But a, a lot of it over budget. Well, again, Nick, uh, this is not so much about cost, it's about cost and benefit. The government says there were additional cost pressures of over $2 billion. Inflation caused by the Ukraine war, China's recovery from COVID and interest rate rises. A whole lot of these additional costs could not reasonably be, uh, if you like, anticipated. Daniel Andrews is like the proverbial bank robber who wants credit for surrendering to police when they finally catch up with him. And then he blames the bank teller. The Auditor General will now do a full report into the finances of the Commonwealth Games. Can I expect you'll say, righto, senior officials, external consultants, the whole team who did that work, uh, they should have done the you know, whole thing, whole lot of things differently. Nick McCallum, 7 News. We'll have more news when we return, including new calls for an inquiry into the Sue Neil Fraser murder case. A state of emergency declared in Canada as a wildfire threatens a city. And a sharp response from China as US President Joe Biden invites key allies to Camp David. On this stage, they'll become extraordinary. There are a million reasons to watch. Brand new The Voice, Monday, 7.30. Running since 1989, Hue and Jets are a must-do attraction for any traveller and showcase the beauty of the mighty Hue and River. When the journey's over, head back to our Boat Shed Cafe for some yummy food and pleasant surroundings. Visit shoptasmania.com.au for exclusive deals from Hue and River Jet Boats. Shop local, buy local, support local. I thought you were renovating the office now that you're retired, Dad. 
No, I was going to move some super to do it, but what's the point? <laughs> Plenty of room for you lot. <laughs> um, about that. Yeah. It's twins. Again. Oh, now I have to get the Renault's done. Make the most of your super moment with our award-winning account-based pension. It's Australian, it's super, and it's yours. How was your promotion thing? I don't know. Well, I'm so proud of you, Dad. I got you something in the glove box. And before you ask, they didn't have fruit and nut. There's a glass and a half in everyone. At the Nick Scarmy Winter Sale, save 40% off the Ren 3-seater, only $18.90. 40% off, now $18.90. Only at Nick Scarly. Our property management team is obsessed with ensuring your investment is managed with professionalism and expertise. Personality is what sets us apart. Is your dad useless when it comes to Father's Day gift ideas? That's okay. Borrow one of ours. Super Cheap Auto now has free courtesy dads to help you find the perfect gift for your dad. This Father's Day, make it super with Super Cheap Auto. The Skoda SUV range is award winning Plural. And it now comes with a seven-year warranty. Get your boat ready this spring with deals from Suzuki Marine. Repower your boat or purchase a new boat package with a Suzuki 40 to 60 horsepower outboard and receive a Suzuki digital gauge valued at over $1,000. Or for 70 to 140 horsepower, receive the Suzuki digital gauge and mechanical rigging valued at over $2,000. Get spring ready with Suzuki, the ultimate outboard motor. Brand new escapes in the brand new season. Again, <laughs> wow. New Escape to the Country. Friday, 8.30 on 7, 2 and 7 Plus. Richmond has sent Trent Cotchin and Jack Rewalt out on a high in an emotional farewell at the MCG. There were tears and cheers from the Tiger faithful as a trio of footy champions said goodbye. A final goodbye for two Tiger greats. A lap like this is usually reserved for the last Saturday in September. Felt like a grand final coming here because there is no next week and there's never again for us. Which we leave here full, our cups are full. We've got three cups behind us which sort of help us as well. One final stroll to the home of footy. Richmond Royalty weren't about to miss the chance to say their thanks, nor the Tiger Army, as two punt road icons ran onto the G for the final time. A kiss for good luck for Dad, although not everyone was ready to let go. A retiring favourite son in blue and white was keen for some airtime of his own. The yellow and black faithful got their moment in the second term. Celebration of the G because it's off the boot of Jack. Goal number 787 and one last Jack jump for good measure. Jack Rewald takes a hanger. The Tigers with the victory. A win for that man, Cotchin. A win for Jack Rewald. This game was about more than four points. Farewell for an Arden Street warrior. To play on the MCG one more time in front of heaps of people is uh, a dream come true. The end of an era for Richmond's modern-day dynasty. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Andrew McCormack, 7 News. Sue Neil Fraser supporters are calling for an independent inquiry into the convicted killer's sentence. The group made its voice heard at a rally in Hobart today, claiming it's a crucial step in determining whether a miscarriage of justice took place. Independent member for Nelson, Meg Webb, also highlighted the need for an Australian Criminal Cases Review Commission. That would provide every state with a backstop essentially to be able to properly and appropriately deal with questions around miscarriage of justice. The government says the Neil Fraser case has been through the appeals process and has no plans for any further inquiries. 
A scientist is accused of burning documents and destroying data to cover up an IVF clinic bungle that cost couples their chance of starting a family. The explosive claims have been aired as hundreds of patients sue Monash IVF over faulty embryo testing. Kirsty Jones put her trust in Monash IVF for the chance of having a second child, but says faulty genetic testing may have robbed her daughter of a sibling. And I can't help but always wonder whether that was due to the, um, the decisions that were made at Monash IVF. She's one of more than 700 patients suing the Monash IVF group over its NIPGTA genetic testing method, claiming it led healthy embryos to be declared abnormal and unusable. New court documents allege a cover-up. There was a scientist at one of the defendant companies who made allegations that she uh, burnt evidence and that she did so for fear of criminal prosecution. There are also suspicions of forgery. Some of the allegations are that there were concerns over the similarities of patient signatures on consent forms. The testing was used between May 2019 and October 2020 when it was suspended. But lawyers claim concerns were raised much earlier and the test should never have been used. Monash IVF says it's now preparing its defence and can't comment on the new claims. But in a statement says it's supporting people affected by the process and insists staff provide best-in-class reproductive care. On so many levels, um, it, it sparks anger, grief, um, a huge amount of turmoil and I think ongoing trauma. Mediation is expected to take place later this year. Sarah Jane Bell, 7 News. Police in Queensland have charged two men with deliberately setting a dozen bushfires that gutted 14 homes. It's alleged the pair lit the fires near Tara and Wyambilla on the state's Western Downs between January and April. The blazes also destroyed a number of vehicles and other structures and blackened more than 4,600 hectares. The men aged 48 and 23 have been remanded in custody. A major manhunt continues for a gunman who shot a 76-year-old man at his home in Melbourne. The victim answered his doorbell when he was shot in the leg just before 8 o'clock on Thursday night. His wife and daughter were able to provide first aid before calling triple zero. The man will undergo surgery today. The gunman was last seen wearing a hazmat suit, leaving the scene. Three of Australia's most critical allies have announced a new defence partnership at a summit hosted by the US President. The deal, forged at Camp David, appears designed to counter emerging threats from China and North Korea. It's hallowed ground for talking global security. The leaders of old rivals South Korea and Japan landed the US president's retreat. And the world will be safer as we stand together. This, Joe Biden's first Camp David invitation for foreign leaders. The Maryland compound has a history hosting big security moments. Today's summit ending with security and economic agreements, including a new defence partnership, with the three promising to swiftly consult on urgent threats. That means we'll have a hotline to share information and coordinate our responses whenever there is a crisis in the region. The president insists the summit was not aimed at China, yet the leader's joint statement refers to China's dangerous and aggressive action in the South China Sea. China's response to the summit? A warning against forming cliques in the Asia-Pacific. The foreign ministry spokesman says the region should not be a duelling ground. Another point of concern for the summit, North Korea. This, as the Biden administration says, it's taking a hard look at suggestions North Korea's latest ballistic missiles might rely on Russian nuclear technology. Tim Lester, 7 News. A new state of emergency has been declared in Canada as a wildfire threatens the city of Kelowna in British Columbia. Hills around the riverfront city are on fire and thousands of properties have been evacuated. Kelowna is just 300 kilometres east of Vancouver. While in the remote northwest territories, evacuations continue as residents of Yellowknife scramble to flee an approaching blaze. A car's dash cam has captured the moment a tornado swept across a road in the American state of Rhode Island. Several tornadoes pummeled the New England region in America's northeast. 
While on the west coast, a hurricane is barreling towards Southern California. There are fears of widespread flooding as the Category 4 storm heads towards land. And the United States has given approval for several NATO countries to supply F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine. The Netherlands and Denmark have confirmed they've been given the green light as soon as Ukrainian pilots are trained and are cleared to fly the warplanes. Kyiv has long asked for the jets so it can support its counter-offensive from the air. A neonatal nurse trusted by families with their sick babies has become Britain's worst serial killer. Found guilty of seven counts of murder of children. Prosecutors say Lucy Letby weaponised her profession. The parents of her victims say they've been tortured. The moment police came knocking. Oh, Lucy, is it? Yeah. Dubbed the vanilla killer, Lucy Letby holidayed with her parents, slept alongside teddy bears and worked as a nurse. She's beige as a person in that she was a normal 20-something year old. In this Chester neonatal unit, she injected premature babies with insulin, milk, some with air over 12 months, the youngest just a day old. Investigations began when the higher than normal mortality rate for newborns emerged. Lucy Letby was the only staffer always on shift, but doctors say hospital bosses ignored their concerns for two years. There are four or five babies who could be going to school now who aren't. Later, police found patient notes in her home and among her diary entries, I am evil, I did this. Found guilty of murdering five boys and two girls and the attempted murder of six more babies. During an extraordinary 10-month trial, Lucy Letby often broke down in tears as the enormity of the accusations against her emerged. The prosecution said it was telling she never cried for the victims. Her motive remains unclear. Prosecutors said she possibly sought the attention of doctors amid fears there may be more victims of Britain's worst child serial killer. In London, Hewitt Feld, 7 News. Tomorrow, for the first time in five years, the MCG will be transformed into a sea of pink. Among the thousands taking part in forming a pink lady on the hallowed turf, one young player who lost her mother to breast cancer. The AFLW season kicks off in two weeks and Hawthorne's Sophie Locke can't wait. The 22-year-old made her debut last year, kicking the Hawks' first ever goal. And we're all with Sophie right now. A bittersweet moment just two weeks after Sophie's mum, Sarah, lost a long battle with breast cancer. To play that first game and kick that first goal, I just thought this was kind of like meant to be and she definitely gave me that little push to yeah, keep going, keep kicking on. The young forward is now an ambassador for Breast Cancer Network Australia. Tomorrow she'll join 10,000 others to help form a giant pink lady for breast cancer awareness. It's going to be yeah, um, a tough day and I'm, I'm glad I'm going to have my family and friends around me. Sophie's dad Stuart also paying tribute to his late bus driver wife, raising breast cancer awareness in the brightest possible way. She'd be very impressed to see all her friends on the side of the bus. In the five years since the last field of women took centre stage at the MCG, 100,000 people have been diagnosed with breast cancer. That's enough to fill the stadium and 15,000 have died. Sunday's event will help BCNA to be there for every person who's diagnosed and living with breast cancer. The public can support the worthy cause by purchasing tickets and merchandise. I'm always playing for mum. Every time I chuck on the jumper with the 21 on the back, I'm always playing for her. The Field of Women's Ceremony starts at 12.45. Jackie Quist, 7 News. Victoria Easto will join us a little later with the day's sports news. As the Tigers draw a line in the sand over Dustin Martin's future, why the sun isn't setting on his time at Richmond. The stinging post-game assessment which lays bare the Magpies' wobbles after the Lions flex their premiership muscle. And Kingborough's NPL hot streak continues with a vital win over Launceston City. Sport is later, but in a moment we'll recap the day's news headlines. And then, surf life-saving volunteers from across the nation to hit our shores, learning from some of the nation's best. And the mother and baby having a whale of a time off the coast of Sydney. Great.
best season ever. September 1 on 7 and 7 Plus. Sleepy's King or Queen for single sale is now on. Explore our range of exclusive Australian-made King or Queen mattresses for the price of a single. Visit our experts in-store today and dream bigger. With over 180 sellout shows and more than 85,000 ticket sales, Marina Pryor and David Hobson return for their national encore tour of The Two of Us. Australia's biggest stars of opera and musical theatre perform live their classics from La Boheme, The Phantom of the Opera, Guys and Dolls, Les Miserables and more, as well as favourites from their award-winning albums and wonderful backstage stories. Don't miss Marina Pryor and David Hobson, The Two of Us. Hurry, book now. The Nick Scarly Winter Sale is on now. With everything reduced across the entire range, everything reduced at the Nick Scarly Winter Sale. Don't you on now. Forget about me. Stuck for ideas this Father's Day? Find the perfect gift for Dad at Anaconda with 30% off all sports footwear by Adidas, Nike and Asics and Columbia Fast Track Fleece, only $69. Play more and pay less with our 10% price beat guarantee. Anaconda! If you're a pickled onion lover and one that wants true blue, why not try Blue Banner Pickles, grown in Tassie just for you. Enjoy Blue Banner in the morning, as a snack or after lunch. No matter when you eat Blue Banner onions, bite them and you'll hear them crunch. And if you don't agree that Blue Banner pickled onions are the crunchiest pickled onions you've ever tasted, just send us a copy of your receipt within 30 days of purchase and we'll refund your purchase. Say hello to your new 12-month term deposit rate from My State Bank at 4.9% per annum. It's a term deposit rate you can't miss. So come into branch or visit mystate.com.au to lock in a great rate today. Big screen bonus deals are now at Harvey Norman. Save $700 on this Samsung 65-inch OLED TV. Now 3595 plus bonus $360 gift card. Massive deal on this huge 77-inch LG OLED Smart TV. Plus huge bonus $650 gift card. Save $3,000 on the Super King Size Sony Bravia 98-inch Google TV. With bonus $1,000 gift card and bonus local delivery and wall mount installation. Wow! Limited time at Harvey Norman now. Go! Living your best life with Hobart City Mission. Looking for an NDIS provider as individual as you are? We got this. Make it your best breakaway. Brand new escapes in the brand new season. Again, <laughs> wow. New Escape to the Country. Friday, 8.30 on 7, 2 and 7 Plus. These are some of the stories making headlines tonight. Hundreds of millions of dollars of extra funding announced for women's sport as Australia's Golden Girls battle it out for World Cup bronze. New negotiations reveal Salamanca stallholders have been wrongly forking out thousands of dollars in stamp duty for more than a decade. Another Arch Centre opens, providing wraparound support for victim survivors of sexual violence. And Legacy front and centre at the MCG as Richmond Royalty bow out for the final time. Tasmania is taking on a new leading role with our surf lifesavers to take charge of swift water rescue training. The state will be a home to a national centre of excellence, readying volunteers from around the nation for when the next disaster hits. They keep our beaches safe during summer and swimmers between the flags, but our serving heroes can do much more than that. We can help the community um, outside of our flags and go, right, we can help in flood water. Tasmanian volunteers are among some of the most highly respected swift water rescue crews in the country, helping in multiple flood emergencies at home and further afield. Our guys are rescue ready and it just gives us another arm to be able to help with emergency services. Surf Life Saving Tasmania has been excelling in this area for a number of years. They're already delivering uh, internationally recognised training for life savers. Now it's Tasmania's turn to teach the mainlanders a thing or two. We've got plenty of flowing water that we can use and the, the natural habitat that we can train in um, will prepare life savers all around Australia and beyond. 
A nation first state-of-the-art centre of excellence will set up shop in Devonport, going full throttle on flood and swift water rescue training. It's a great initiative and we're looking forward to making sure that we have the capacity throughout the Federation to help more communities in times of need. This uh, nation leading centre will be a real beacon uh, for uh, the next crop of uh, first responders coming through who will be saving lives in swift water and flood rescue. It's hoped the new schools will ready volunteers for when the next disaster strikes. We're trying to get as many lifesavers through as quickly as possible so that we're ready to respond when we're called upon. Surf lifesavers here in our hour of need, no matter the season or disaster. Victoria East 07, Tasmania News. The inaugural Pacific Air Show has taken flight on the Gold Coast. Surfers Paradise beaches have been packed as some of the best pilots in the world put on a thrilling spectacle. Soaring over surface paradise. Smothering the skyline with smoke. Planes roar past. While on the sand, all eyes were in the sky for the first Gold Coast Pacific Air Show. It's all about showcasing what uh, Australian pilots can do. The masses flooded the beaches, watching the world's best aerobatic pilots. Matt Hall captivated the crowd, then it was the Air Force's turn, showcasing its capabilities. With the Hercules, the C-17, then... The show-stopping Super Hornet. The flying that you see on display is just our normal operational manoeuvres. Which is inspiring aspiring pilots like Allegra Collins. Well, I actually really want to be a pilot in the Air Force. The 15-year-old rubbed shoulders with female pilots from the US, plus Caleb Bubash, who's currently stationed in Darwin. We uh, work on interoperability between the two nations as partner nations. Uh, and just get ready for the future fight through there. He flies the Osprey, one of the United States' most impressive aircraft. And we see this event going up, up, up and up and only getting better. This has been four and a half years of planning and already it's exceeding expectations. Around 30,000 people have flooded through the gates, but organisers estimate 100,000 were watching along the coastline. The event even getting the tick of approval from US air show royalty, Sean D. Tucker. The Gold Coast has got us beat hands down. Which is why it's locked in for another four years. Jordan Quinn, 7 News. Australia's insurance industry is being warned to clean up its act on the back of figures showing the sector is booming thanks to sharp premium hikes. In the year to March, profits soared by 195% to $3.7 billion. At the same time, home insurance premiums went up by 28% in the wake of devastating floods. The corporate regulator, ASIC, has slammed insurers in a new report for letting down vulnerable customers. A southern right whale and her calf have been spotted off Long Reef on Sydney's northern beaches as they make their way south to cooler waters. The pair is being monitored closely with the calf needing around 300 litres of milk a day to make the journey to the Antarctic. Boaters are also being urged to keep their distance. Sightings of southern rights are very rare, with fewer than 300 of the marine giants spotted each year off our coast. This calf, one of only two recorded this year. Sport is next with Victoria Risto. Good evening, Victoria. The Matildas are close to half-time in that bronze medal match. How's the game going so far? Oh, Merth, our Golden Girls will need to take the fight to Sweden into the second half. Also coming up tonight, a special win to mark a milestone match for a red leg stalwart. And then the Blues sink the Suns to advance to their first finals campaign in a decade. favourite doctor is back. What's here means something. The drama. I've heard so much about you. Oh. Is about to take off. Great passenger. We have to land the plane. Let me out. New RFDS, Tuesday after The Voice. You know, for more than 20 years, we've safely delivered the energy our customers rely on every day. It's the energy that helps businesses grow and nurtures our unique Tasmanian lifestyle. But we're not just in the business of energy. We're in the business of opportunities. 
because with a little support and commitment, big ambitions can become even bigger realities. There's a reason the Super Sleeper Pro has been our best-selling mattress topper for the last four years in a row and why celebrities just love it. When you wake up in the morning, you feel absolutely fabulous. You feel like you've been supported all night. The difference it's made to my sleeping is amazing. I fall asleep more quickly and I wake up more fresh. If you want the best night's sleep, keep watching because coming up, you could get two of our best-selling Every Comfort pillows absolutely free. Mattresses are one of the most used items in our home, but over time they wear down, sink in the middle and just need to be replaced. Before you throw out your old mattress, try the Super Sleeper Pro, our best-selling mattress topper that rolls out over your existing mattress and makes it just like new. It's the only mattress topper that has three waves of cushioning support under the heaviest parts of your body. Super Sleeper's three layers of soft, triple density memory foam cradles your whole body for the best night's sleep you've ever had. The secret is in the three-layer comfort pad technology, creating a seamless feel of comfort and support, while the unique tri-line positioning system cushions and controls your shoulders, hips and knees to give you a better night's sleep. Simply unzip the removable bamboo cover and you can pop it in the wash so your bed stays clean and hygienic all year round. With nearly 2,000 five-star reviews from customers who just love their Super Sleeper Pro, you can trust the premium quality will stand the test of time. It will ensure that you have the best night's sleep. Call 02938741100. Get to supersleeperpro.com.au and we'll give you not one, but two of the best selling every comfort pillows with adjustable and removable filling so you get perfect alignment every night. $180 value. They're yours absolutely free. And a 120 night sleep guarantee. Plus, free postage anywhere in Australia. Get your Super Sleeper Pro every comfort pillows plus free postage. Call now or go online and don't miss out. Bold is standing out, never blending in. It's unapologetically chunky and never thin. Bold is savoured, never swift. It's plentiful, rich, sensations ignite. Old gold is bold in every bite. No need to laugh or cry. It's Imagine how a change of outlook can change your outcome. Join St Luke's Health as we work to make Tasmania the healthiest island on the planet. Tonight's sport is brought to you by Tank World. Catch the winter rains in a Tank World tank. Tank World! It's nearly half time in the third place playoff between the Matildas and Sweden. Laura Spurway is in Brisbane. Laura, it's another sellout crowd for the it Matildas. Is Victoria, almost 50,000 people have turned up here tonight in Brisbane for the final match of the Matildas World Cup campaign. Now we know they've already made history, but no Australian team has ever won a medal at a World Cup, so that is their goal here tonight. They're facing the world number three side, Sweden, but with Sam Kerr starting and the Aussie coach coming from Sweden, he knows their team very well. The Aussies have a few weapons in the tank, so hopefully they can deploy them and get the job done here tonight. Hopefully they can do just that. Thank you, Laura. Well, Tasmanians are joining the rest of the nation with a lot of nervous eyes on that very important bronze medal match. The Matildas are currently facing Sweden as the two sides fight for third place honours. The score is currently 1-0 with the Swedes with the advantage. Craig McRae's Magpies are soul searching after yet another loss last night to Brisbane. The Crows are now clinging on to first place on the ladder. Arm in arm today, the Magpies suddenly find themselves hanging on for top spot for dear life. If you're a Collingwood supporter, a player or a coach, you've definitely got concerns because you're not playing the, the smooth football that you were early in the year. Last night's loss to Brisbane, their third in four weeks, making for tough reading. Craig McRae's side leaking 105 points a game in the last month. A far cry from 68 a game to start the year as the league's best defence. I think the last four or five weeks we've, we've just conceded too many goals, too many points. Yeah, we're not happy with the way we're defending the ground. Nathan Murphy also in doubt to face Essendon after finishing on the bench. Hopes though Jordan Ngoi and Bobby Hill return for one last hit out pre-finals. The challenge for us is not to be there already. And then you get there and you haven't got 
the energy or the, and you go, oh, hang on. Charlie Cameron, the on-field hero with four goals. Off it, Devin Robertson hitting Colt status. The midfielder picking up more than 14,000 Instagram followers, playing two minutes topless as the Lions flex their premiership muscle. He's absolutely loving it, yeah, Dev. Uh, nah, it's a good laugh. Mitch Cleary, 7 News. The Blues have broken their decade drought, securing a spot in the top eight after a thrilling four-point win over the Suns. Meanwhile, the Bombers haven't been able to fight back. And the Blues just keep on rolling. It's nine on end. And who knows when it'll stop. A 10-year drought comes to an end. The Blues securing their place in the top eight. We're right now in the moment, and this wasn't about making finals about impacting them and um, feel like the job isn't done. The Suns dominated the first quarter, forcing Carlton to fight back from 40 points down. Charlie Kerno the difference, booting five goals. And Charlie starting to come to life. But the key forwards start at both ends of the ground, a mark in the dying seconds securing the Blues win. Just so proud of our boys. Um... You know, it's come a long way and finally you get the result that we want. Oh, mate, I'm just excited. I don't even know what you're saying. I think whether I actually decided to call him back there or not, he was going back there, so uh, which was thankful that he did because obviously he uh, had a couple of clutch moments. The Blues now just two points outside the top four, extending their winning streak to nine in a row. In Sydney, the Giants have destroyed Essendon's finals hopes with a 70-point lead at half-time. And Brett Daniels can't miss. That's a third. More pain for the Bombers. Matt Guelphy subbed out, spotted icing his hamstring on the bench. Jesse Hogan booting six goals to three-quarter time. And the Giants crack the 100 now in terms of a margin. 105 points. Their biggest ever win is 108. They face the Blues next week and will likely need to win for their own finals hopes. Kate Massey, 7 News. Richmond has poured cold water on speculation surrounding Dustin Martin's future, with future Suns coach Damien Hardwick watching on. Martin was at his brilliant best with three goals and 31 disposals against North Melbourne. Firstly, Dustin is contracted and you know I, I just think he's looked back maybe the last couple of years and you know, with Edwards and Revolt and Koch and, 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 and sees the importance of history and legacy and tradition and what that means and you know he's got a opportunity to play 300 games next year. I just can't see a scenario where he's not at Richmond. Shea Bolton finished with four goals as the Tigers sent Jack Rewalt and Trent Cotchen out with a 29-point win. Luke McDonald's yeah. season is over though after suffering a hamstring injury. The tri Roos are bouncing off the walls after winning their first grand final in 21 years. The team dominated Campbelltown from the beginning, up 13 points when the final siren blew on the 2023 Oatlands District Football Association season. tri own Mitch Reeve judged Looks best like on ground. They're going to be victorious. Oh, yes. Siren goes, tri 11 13 79 defeat. The win, a hard blow for Campbelltown, which has been runner-up for the past two years. And it's been a perfect end to a special day for one legend of the Bracknell Football Club. Josh Holland notched up 450 senior games in style, booting a few crucial goals for the Redlegs. I was lucky to get on the end of a couple. Um, 450, actually pretty proud about it. Um, a few years ago, I never thought I'd probably get there. And to make the milestone match that little bit sweeter, Bracknell proved too strong for Bridge North, winning by 46 points. In the TSL, Kingra has all but secured the minor premiership, downing North Launceston in a thriller this afternoon. In other matches, North Hobart stunned Launceston in a ball over, while Lauderdale had a big win over Glenorchy. For North Launceston and the Tigers, this match had more than the four points riding on it. The Tigers got the first two majors before a home side recovery. 45 degree angle, Mackers called it off already. Let's see how he goes. Gets round, gets oh, good distance, kicks the goal to Kenny Watt. The Bombers eventually edging in front. Oliver Dean. Kicks towards goal and he kicks it for North Launceston. Kingborough finding its bite in the third with three early goals. Carter sets good hands. Here it is. Off the ground. It spins. It goes. It's a goal. As tempers frayed, the Tigers took a lead into three-quarter time. But Brad Cox Goodyear got the Bombers off to a dream start in the fourth. He does. He hits up his coach. 
Cox Goodja play on. It's the start they need. He's popped the fist and they've done it. In a seesawing contest, the two Premiership favourites traded the lead. Two goals from Jack Tomkinson, however, proved decisive. Kicks towards goal. Jack Tomkinson has kicked the goal. Ollie Dean gave North Launceston late hope, but it just couldn't find one last goal. The Tigers sneaking home in an epic thriller. However, it finished on a sour note with a post-siren clash. They're likely meeting in the final shaping as a tasty affair. At North Hobart Oval, the Demons started well against Launceston, leading at quarter time. The Blues found their groove in the second as spot fires broke out around the ground. But an upset was on the cards when North Hobart fought back to lead at the final break. The Demons were able to hold their nerve, recording a famous victory. And Lauderdale went about ruining celebrations for new TSL record games holder Josh Arnold with a five goal to none first term. The Pies finally opening their account in the second, but it was a first half to forget. Lauderdale up by five goals at the main break. That dominance continuing after half time. Come on. Come on. Lauderdale too strong for the Pies, cruising to a comfortable win. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. In the Women's Super League, newly crowned champions South Hobart were held to a goalless draw by Clarence, while Devonport defeated Launceston United 2-0. In the NPL, Kingborough's hot streak continued with a vital win over Launceston City. A goal leech in half giving the Lions the three points, helping them cement their place in the top four. Last night, Glenorchy and South Hobart played out a one-all draw. South appeared to have won the game until an injury time goal gave the Knights a share of the points. To hockey in Canterbury's men's field has defeated University 3-2 in round 19 of the Premier League. University started out strong in a frantic first quarter, putting the first goal on the board. The teams were tied at the nine minute mark and again in the second quarter before Canterbury made the winning shot. <laughs> Meanwhile, Canterbury's women's team also outpowered University, winning the match 2 1. Champion trainer Chris Waller notched up another milestone at Royal Randwick this afternoon, capturing the first Group 1 race of the new season. James McDonald riding fangirl to victory in the Wick Stakes, Waller's 150th Group 1 win. One Group 1 is, you just, you never forget them. But to win 150. 150. Yeah, I thank my team. It's pretty special. Waller still has a long way to go to catch the record shared by turf icons Bart Cummings and Tommy Smith, 246 Group 1, one, group one wins there. And this year's Melbourne Cup could have a distinct royal flavour. Desert Hero, a horse owned by King Charles and Queen Camilla, is set to dominate for the Flemington feature this November. Trainer William Haggart says he's keen to bring the three-year-old down under this spring. Desert Hero recently won the King George V stakes at Royal Ascot. And if there's a few big AFL games coming up tonight, I think you might have a little extra reason to be nervous. Your Swans are playing away. Yeah, a bit nervous, Vic. You're not wrong there. And Carlton didn't do the Swans any favours this afternoon. And what's this you got on? Is it Collingwood or Geelong? Whatever. I'm, I'm not happy with that either. And I'm totally outnumbered here in the studio because Kaya Wicks will join us after the break with the weather forecast. to tell me why you killed my daughter. I didn't kill her. I've been framed. You're hiding something. I'll find out the truth. Without Sin premieres Wednesday after The Voice. <laughs> Escape in the all-new Tank 300. See you out there. The Nick Scarly Winter Sale is on now. With everything reduced across the entire range, everything reduced at the Nick Scarly Winter Sale. Don't you on now. Forget about me. Are your views being ruined by poor ventilation? Are crying windows creating unwanted moisture and breeding unsightly mould? Does your living room smell like last week's dinner? 
A warm and dry home ventilation system from Pellet Fires Tasmania will provide free heating from the sun and remove embarrassing smells, mould and dampness from your home. Made in Tasmania by a Tasmanian company that knows Tasmanian conditions. Available statewide from Pellet Fires Tasmania. Call and we'll surprise you with the price. Honey, we're out of ice. Boz. I know this is a role you can fill. I won't let you down. He's got the tong job. That's a great mate moment. And so's this. Sportsbet's bet with mates now comes with chat. So you can share a bet and some banter with Sportsbet. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website. Want to be the next radio superstar? This is your chance. SCA Audio Academy is now open for applications. Learn everything you need from industry leaders in a short seven-week online course. Apply now at scacareers.com.au. Kia, movement that inspires. There are moments we cherish. Big or small, they shape us. We seek moments that move us and moments to find ourselves again. We connect, reconnect, nourish and nurture. We give, receive and we trust. At RACT, we're here for our members and we work hard to offer rewards, allowing you to have more of those moments. The worst effects of smoking are on the inside, including hardened veins and arteries and chronic lung diseases like emphysema that leave their victim fighting for every breath. Cigarette smoke is heartless. Don't let it in. At Toyota, we've made a vehicle which emits less CO2 while driving than a human produces on a run. It's in our nature to work towards a cleaner tomorrow. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. Tonight's weather update is brought to you by I Want Energy, the solar experts. Today, Hobart, 17 degrees 18 in Launceston and Devonport, with minimum temperatures 1 to 2 degrees above average in the north, Burnie 16. The state's top recorded at Eddystone Point with a very mild 19 degrees today. St Helens and Friendly Beaches, 18. Mariah Island Grove and Bushy Park, 17. Flinders Island, 15. 14 on King Island and for Low Head. Strawn, 13. Luncheon Hill, 11. Just reaching double digits for Liweenie today, managing 10 degrees after an overnight low of minus 1 degree. Overcast low-level clouds is seen over the west. High level cloud is developing over central north and northeast, contracting over Flinders Island. High level cloud lies over northern Tasmania and a band over parts of Cape York Peninsula. Scattered low level cloud sits over parts of the mainland's southern shore and western Tasmania. The rest of Australia is relatively cloud free. Tomorrow, a high pressure system centred over northern South Australia extends a ridge over the entirety of the country, sparing the western coast of WA as a cold front approaches southwestern WA. Two coastal waters westerly winds 20 to 30 knots although slightly less in the east. The west and south can expect westerly swells up to five metres, southwesterly swells up to four metres offshore in the south. Firstly, there is a severe weather warning for this evening for damaging winds in the southeast, east coast and Midlands for forecast district rather. That severe weather warning continues also for tomorrow. There is also a gale warning between Tasman Island to Low Rocky Point and a strong wind warning between Sandy Cape to St Helens Point to include Banks Strait and Franklin Sound, another for the low east and central west coasts. Tomorrow, Hobart, cloudy, 16 degrees, 17 in Richmond and 15 for Ouse. Launceston, partly cloudy, 17 to the top. 16 in Devonport and similar conditions in Deloraine with 15. Cloud continues in Burnie, expecting 14, showers and 13 in Strawn, winds easing in Curry. St Helens and Swansea, partly cloudy, 17 degrees, mostly sunny skies in Whitemark. As we approach another week, Monday showers about the north and west, otherwise fine elsewhere. Tuesday showers mostly contracting to the west in the evening with possible hail about the west. Wednesday showers about the north and west with possible light showers elsewhere. Taking a look now to the mainland tomorrow, Darwin, sunshine of course, 34 is the top there, also sunny skies in Sydney and Brisbane, showers and 17 in the city of Churches, 18 and cloudy in Melbourne. 
And currently, it's mostly cloudy across the state uh, this evening. 14 for Hobart, uh, 13 for Launceston and 12 for Devonport. Murph, have you been promoted or I'm not sure what's going on? Uh, Kai, I haven't been promoted for 40 years, but I've got to say that's been the best weather segment I've seen all week. Now, finally tonight, only a month after Queensland set the record for the world's largest nutbush dance, the Sunshine State's been dethroned. More than 6,500 people sidestepped in sync to the Tina Turner Classic today in Broken Hill to claim the bragging rights. Many of them dressed in Mad Max costumes, a nod to the film franchise famously filmed there in the Outback Town. <laughs> The event raising funds to support the work of the Royal Flying Doctors. Now that's all our news for now. Thanks for joining us. I'll be back tomorrow night. Good evening.